It's been coming for some while, over a year in the planning, and now it has arrived. It's finally here, in Cardiff. It bathes the city and surrounding area with an exemplary demonstration of the latest high technology. It promotes the region into a position of global leadership with the free provision of access to the latest communications and processing channels. It's called Arwine. Arwine is a chain of low-cost, low-power, internet-enabled radio transceivers that provides Cardiff and the wider region with free access to the Internet of Things, IoT. It's a solid, scalable backbone that can not only interconnect over a million devices, but allows local firms, organisations and individuals to use the system freely. It forms the major part of what is known as a smart city. More importantly, it's a valuable test bed, a resource for education and innovators. It will stimulate play and lead to novel ideas and help with the development of new products. This video will show how it operates, chart how it came about, show some of the technical and historical aspects of the project and how it will form a firm platform on which to develop new technologies. A series of transceivers called gateways have been installed around the region that connect things to the internet. Any thing can now freely and easily call home using the high quality and reliable signal provided by Arwine. But what are things and what can they do? Things can be divided into two general categories, those that talk and those that listen. In the most basic form, things may be sensors. Light sensors, thermometers, movement smoke detectors, detectors acid alarm, monitors, accelerometers, accelerometers, river meters, meters, altitude meters, meters, meters. the list seems almost endless. They become a thing by allowing them to talk or communicate their state. Actuators are things that can listen and act upon instructions. Remote control requires actuators such as Pumps, servos, switches, levers, relays, solenoids, locks, gates, motors, screw Again, heads. the list seems never-ending. In general, things can communicate with other things. This is called M-to-M, machine-to-machine communications, whilst others can report to apps. The term used here for things is a node, where a node can both talk and listen. Three features typify things or nodes. Minuscule power consumption minimal data transfer, and a very low-power radio connection. Each node uses extremely low-power radio to communicate with gateways, whilst consuming so little power that it will operate for up to 10 years using a single AAA battery. Up to now, only domestic smoke detectors have been used in this manner, without the associated radio link. Like smoke detectors, the need to communicate with a thing, or for things to communicate, is likely to be small and infrequent, but important, if not critical, when it does occur. Having said that, it's possibly not the technology used to control a nuclear power station. Despite these limitations, the number of connected things is already enormous. Although IoT is currently a hot topic, it's been growing dramatically in the background. The start of IoT is difficult to establish, but a good indication of the date could be when the estimated number of things on the internet and the number of individuals was the same, and this has been estimated to be way back in 2008. As technology advances, the complexity and capability of things increases, whilst the size and cost plummets. It's projected that there will be over 50 billion devices connected worldwide by 2020. The Internet of Things has recently achieved wider fame due to the publicity given to the results of high-profile hacking attacks. With billions of cheap things all over the world, all connected via open radio channels, IoT is obviously an attractive target for misuse. But this makes solving interesting security problems even more vital and provides another important use of the R-Wine test bed. Radio signals are all around us and may be seen on this display. These large spikes are the powerful FM radio stations, whilst these are digital radio and TV channels. And this bunch are mobile phones. The Things Network uses power levels that are so small and dispersed that they're unseen, hidden away, down here in the noise, in this band. We can chart the other radio technologies we use in our daily lives on another graph, where we plot the amount of data we can send and the distance over which it's typically transmitted. At one extreme are satellites beaming down huge amounts of data over broad areas from space. At the other extreme is the near-field radio typically used on credit cards, where only a few digits are transmitted over just a couple of millimetres. In between is Bluetooth and BLE that can send more data over slightly longer distances and Wi-Fi yet more further still. These are generally termed LAN, local area networks. Systems that operate over greater distances still are called WANs 
wide area networks, and this area is dominated by mobile phones. The performance of mobile phones has developed dramatically in recent years and uses 3G, 4G, 5G to send data at ever-increasing rates over medium distances. But of course, there is a bill to be paid in the price and power required for this functionality. Simply having repeatedly to recharge mobile phone batteries is a constant nuisance. Things can, and currently do, use Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and phone technology to communicate. But this region here, where very little data needs to travel over long distances, is where systems called Low Power Wide Area Networks, LP1s, operate. There are a number of competing solutions emerging globally, of which the major two are Sigfox and LoRa. While Sigfox is a completely closed and proprietary system, LoRaWAN is a development of the LoRa Alliance. This alliance is a coalition of industry partners who have gathered to develop the LoRaWAN standard. Its more open structure makes it the chosen option selected for this project. Two notable features of LoRaWAN performance is its ability to deal with a high number of nodes and still operate effectively even in the presence of high background noise. A single gateway can cope with over 10,000 nodes. Nodes can be up to 15 kilometers away in a perfect environment, but distance is reduced to a few kilometers in built up and noisy city areas. The gateway intelligently adapts its transmission rate with the smaller signals received from distant nodes. Additional gateways can just be plonked into place to relieve the pressure of any excessive traffic or just to provide a stronger signal. Unlike the mobile phone system, where the network planning is vital, LoRa gateways may be located in an ad hoc manner. Cardiff's geographical situation is perfect for radio testing. It's an amphitheatre, allowing gateways to be situated on the hills surrounding the main centre. Moreover, this project has been easier to instigate as it's based upon a similar project started in 2001. The original Armine provided a free citywide Wi-Fi connection before the advent of low-cost, ubiquitous broadband technology. This project also connected the island of Flatholm, which was the location of Marconi's first demonstration of radio over water, a little more than a century before. Use of previous R-Wine sites, augmented by carefully selected additional locations, ensures that a good quality signal for more than one source is available across the whole of the region. Notable host sites include a range from Crinant Farm, with its rural connection and view dominating the Bristol Channel towards Newport. The island of Flatholm, one of the locations offering the full 15 km range for testing, and St Augustine's Church with its ideal location on the Panath headland and direct view of both Cardiff and Barry. Prime gateway sites offer security, access to a new area, a pleasant view, elevation, after all, light is just a special radio signal, a reliable power supply, and internet access, known as backhaul. At the outset of this project, not all of the available gateway locations had an adequate backhaul internet feed. To overcome this problem, a number of point-to-point -point links were installed. In several instances, a portion of this feed was redistributed via Wi-Fi as a local service and a revenue earning activity that ensures longer-term sustainability. To this point, we've concentrated on the node gateway connection. Mention was made of both the machine-to-machine -machine connection and machine-to-application, the ubiquitous app. Both the node and the application are covered by the generic title Edge Technologies, as these are at the border of the block diagram of our system. It's these Edge Technologies where a majority of new developments and innovations are expected, but there are other reasons as to why the background supporting system should be investigated. No publication these days will be complete without mentioning the cloud, and the cloud supporting ROWINE is the Things Network. The Things Network is an open source project first begun in Amsterdam. It has, as they say, gone viral, and it is now duplicated in over 80 cities around the world. The term open should not now be a new concept in the world of information and communications technologies. Open means that all the background engineering and software is openly developed and published. International standards are adopted wherever possible, with every detail publicly available to be copied without restriction. Open generates a continuing flow of first-class contributions from a wide community of experts. Despite its disparate nature, it produces a vibrant and up-to-the-minute design environment. This is complemented by a wealth of competent individuals providing support and guidance from all around the world. The current incarnation of the Things Network is an open cloud structure. 
a minimal block diagram shows how a gateway is connected to a router, to a broker, handler, and then out to an application. A full description of this network is given elsewhere, but in practice, this breaks down into functional blocks that are then duplicated to provide scalability. There are many blocks working in parallel. These service the growing number of nodes and applications and unscramble the routing for every user. On incoming messages, it's this system that discovers whether the same message has been received and passed on by more than one gateway. This is always possible due to the vagaries of radio propagation. The duplicates can therefore be eradicated. Before this happens, a comparison of the metadata coupled with each message determines which radio link provides the strongest signal. Only that route is used for any returned data. It's this mechanism that allows new gateways to be plonked anywhere, as mentioned earlier. It also deals with any gateways that may fail in service or lose power. There are several levels of encryption inside the network. This provides a high level of security, but is augmented by the fact that further encryption is also included from end to end. At no point in the network is the unencrypted raw end to end data ever exposed. It's this feature that allows third parties to duplicate the thing's network function externally. Each element can be duplicated on its own or as part of a group to augment the thing's network to add resilience, or even run as a partial or entirely complete private network. For those not wanting to become involved in private hardware, the option exists to allow the data to be integrated into other IoT cloud services, such as Azure, Amazon Web Services, IBM Watson, Open Sensors, IFTT, etc. The implications of the installation of these few gateways should now become clear. It has been a very small first step in the process that will escalate the use and development of the Internet Things in the region. The well-engineered, professionally installed gateways located at strategic locations ensures a solid, durable and reliable backbone across the region. The dominant major early deployment removes the need to duplicate services and the open nature of this system ensures unrestricted independent participation. The advantages of smart cities are well documented elsewhere, but first-hand experience in a local dynamic learning community is priceless. It was not that many years ago when the question, how will anyone know where I am to send me an email, was not an unreasonable one. Our subsequent experience masks the charm of this naivety, but we now suffer from the same myopia as we squint into the mirage of the IoT future. Thank you.